Alright, this is John Cullen with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to answer the question, John, what's the best juicer you sell for medicinal fruits, right? These are like small fruits and berries, or even berries you could consider medicinal due to their high antioxidant content. And what juicer best preserves them, preserves the nutrients that you could get out of the fruits and berries, right? Now, on a wider picture, a question I get a lot because a lot of people want to go on fruit cleanses, which is basically fruit juice only cleanses, which I am personally not a fan of. There are definitely some key nutrients, especially needed for stage two detoxification that are in green vegetables and other vegetables specifically. But this will also answer the question, the best juicer we sell at Discount Juicers for fruits. And they simply are right here and right here. Well, maybe not this exact type, but a vertical slow juicer. So um, the pure juicer um, is the best style juicer for basically any fruit, okay? What you do generally is the inventor of the pure, basically you could take a pineapple and put it between this uh, press and run the press up and it'll really just squeeze out all the water out of the pineapple. It'll get all the juice out. I'm not so convinced it'll get all the phytonutrients out by just simply pressing the pineapple between the press that's pressing the pounds of I don't know how, how many elephants. Um, so then uh, I have a video where I actually post a link down below, use the press to basically cut up apples into small pieces, press out the juice, you can see I get a more clear juice, and then the same exact half of apples I basically run through the grinder where I grind it up, I think it runs at like 3600 RPM or 4000 RPM, something like that. It grinds it up into pulp and then I press that out clearly in the one that I ground up and then pressed out you will see a deeper pigment color and that's because it's getting some of the phytonutrients out of the skin and putting that into your juice and to remind you guys that haven't done the research on it based on my research and the data I've seen there are more nutrients actually in the skin and probably also the core um, than anywhere else in the juicer so if you're coring your apples throwing the core away especially the seed area which may have some um, toxins like some cyanide in the, in, the, in the seeds, which on small levels, in my personal opinion, may be health beneficial. Although, you know, if you don't feel comfortable eating, don't eat them. Do your own research. I think I looked it up once. I mean, you'd have to eat basically like 200 apple seeds <laughs> in a short amount of time to basically cause any kind of negative reaction. But another term I've heard is that the dose is in the poison. Now, if you have any medical condition or anything, please see a professional qualified healthcare physician or doctor. Um, this video is for informational purposes only where I'm sharing you with you guys my personal opinions uh, based on my research and also my experiences using the juicers. Um, so the thing is, this style machine will juice all fruits, basically, um, and get the driest pulp. So if your goal is just sheer yield, that's where you're going to want to go with this machine. On the other hand, if your goal is like maybe more phytonutrients, you know, this may or may not get you there. So I think the two areas where the pure or a grinding and pressing style two-stage juicer falls short is number one in the grinding. Uh, the juicer is only as efficient as the grind. Now this does produce the best ground produce of all the juicers we sell, even over and above one of these style machines, but it does it at a high speed, may introduce oxygen, which may negatively affect some of the antioxidants or the, um, you know, uh, air sensitive, um, you know, uh, nutrients in there. And so that's my first step. And then the second step is you basically generally then put the mash into a press cloth. Um, this is the standard press cloth that it comes with. You cannot see through this. So when you press out, literally when I'm pressing carrots in here, at the end of pressing carrots, you'll see literally water come out because this machine is literally blowing open cell walls, not only due to the grinding aspect, but also just sh the sheer pressure and force that's being exerted on the pulp to basically blow out the water. But I'm, you know, it's questionable if it's also getting some of the nutrients, if you're just getting clear water, like, I mean, maybe there's still some minerals in there, but I'm definitely sure there's no anthocyanins in there, you know? Uh, because the water is coming out clear at the end, okay? Now, maybe in the beginning, yes. And then the negative thing about this is that this uh, cloth will absorb many of the different pigments as well. My regular cloth, because this is a brand new one, is, uh, you know, quite stained uh, and pigmented uh, because of this. 
And so the only the nutrients that get past this pet press cloth have to be smaller than the diameter of the holes in this press cloth that I cannot see through, <laughs> you know. Um, so if your particle size is too large, it's not going to get through this press cloth, meaning it's not going to end up in the juice, which means you're leaving nutrients behind, right? So I think that may that is probably a factor um, on why the juices that I make with the pure taste a bit more watery than juices I make with a juicer. Such as this one, uh, this is the Nema that actually has a juicing screen that uh, you know does not uh, basically uh, take on the color so you're not losing pigments because the pigments basically come through or they're in here that you could actually wash through which I'll show you. Um, and it has a larger part hole size. Now Nema, uh, now Pure did come out with a solution to this and uh, this, is, this is it right here. So you can see clearly on this cloth, I could see through it, this cloth I cannot. I'm not sure if they have released this cloth officially or if they will release it. I'm not up to date on that. I believe they made this for like a coconut milk or nut milk where they want more particles to come through. So this is a lot thicker. Heavy duty, you're still going to get the um, saturation of the pigments in here before it starts coming out. You know, but you're going to leave like a little more par particulate in there, which also some more phytonutrients will come through. So I you know, look forward to testing this w against this juicing different produce items and I'll show you guys the difference in pigment colors and also juicing it like through one of these juicers to show you guys the difference in pigment colors. Alright so that's the two downsides of the pure style or hydraulic uh, two-stage press. Now the first stage could be overcome instead of using this grind which will do a pretty good grind but you get even a more effective grind by doing something like blending. Now I don't necessarily recommend traditional blending that blends just in a container um, because you can't, once again, with a high-speed blender, 20,000, you know, um, RPM, or even, you know, big RPM, you're getting a lot of hits on the nutrients, and if you look at a blender as it's running, there's a funnel cone, that's the air being sucked in, exposed to the phytonutrients, and they are potentially, in my opinion, oxidizing based on scientific studies that I've seen. So if you guys do want to use your blender as a first step, pre-juicing, then I would recommend what's called a vacuum blender. I have other videos on vacuum blending. If I remember, I'll put a link down below to that. That, that appliance simply allows you to remove the excess air in the chamber and some of the oxygen uh, to reduce the oxygen percentage so that you don't oxidize those valuable phytonutrients and uh, you know antioxidant compounds. You know, And so that's my goal is to maximize these nutrients. I know some of you guys, this is like over your guys' head, and you guys don't really care about phytonutrients. You just want to get a juice and drink it, then you probably would already turn the video off. But I know some of you guys, this is really important. You know, I almost lost my life when I was younger. I had to turn my health around, and now I strive to, you know, um, lead the best life and the healthiest lifestyle I can by incorporating the different equipment that I've been using myself for 25 years that I've been selling since 1998 and sharing videos online such as this one since, uh, you know, I don't know, like since for 11 years, since uh, uh, 2009, uh, uh, when I started making videos to educate people about juicing online. So this has been my journey that I'm sharing with you guys, and maybe some of you guys will benefit from this, and some of you guys won't, but I'm here to make the video because I got up my own job to do uh, today. Um, so yeah, so this machine will handle soft fruit. So for example, I had some pears that were like Washington grown red pears, they got super soft, super mushy. If I tried to put them in a slow juicer, even a high speed juicer, which would kind of work, it would froth it up too much, it would get some juice out, but it would be a mess. Like this would make applesauce out of soft produce or soft fruits, um, whereas you could press the apples in this and it'll clearly with the bag, you know, not let that soft pulp through, which some slow juicers, many, all the slow juicers have issues with uh, to one degree or another. So, you know, if you have really soft produce, then you want to go definitely with this route. So, if you have a nice firm produce, as I'll be juicing in a second, a vertical juicer is probably your best option. This is the style of juicer I prefer. It's called a vertical single auger juicer. How it works is, you know, instead of a high-speed grinder, it has a low-speed auger that turns uh, 43 RPM. Uh, the produce goes in and it basically grinds up in between the um, auger and the juicing screen. Uh, the juice then flows out of the juicing screen and then the pulp flows out right here. Um, so this works with nice firm fruits. So if you are selecting fruits to juice, select the nicest, most firm fruits would be counterintuitive because normally you want to pick the soft, juicy ones to eat. And, you know, for that reason, I encourage you guys to actually eat your fruits and actually not juice them. I am a big advocate of juicing. 
primarily leafy greens and other vegetables, and while I do juice some fruits as I will be today, that I think they are best eaten. And here's the thing, the best way to extract phytonutrients out of medicinal berries and fruits are <laughs> right here. Our teeth, our teeth run at a low RPM, they could grind and chew, they're perfectly designed to extract all the nutrients out of different um, foods, although it's kind of gross if you're trying to do something in the lab and you're chewing it all up in a, in a juice and you spit it out, then you got contamination of saliva and enzymes and who knows what else is in there, all right? But yeah, so I'd encourage you guys to just eat your fruits if you guys are really not super serious or in, into it like I am. Um, you know, because we could literally crunch up and, and get a lot of nutrients out, but I'm leaving a juicer to it, so it's a lot more clean and easy. Plus, I could store what I'm making today and have it for, you know, later on, because I'm going to, you know, dose it on out later. Uh, so I do have other videos where I talk about the Pure Juicer and the Nama Juicer. Um, I find the Nama Juicer is my favorite uh, vertical juicer for grinding. If we're specifically looking at the grinding aspect this unit tends to grind a little bit more part final finer particle size than other vertical juicers i've tested to date runner up second to this is like the vsj843 by omega that grinds almost as well as this but also this puts less pulp in the juice although this has a smaller feed chute which is inconvenient to use and this machine only has a two-year warranty on the uh, top set although it does have a 10-year warranty on the bottom Parts. The VSJ, on the other hand, you know, you get a larger feed chute, which in the video I did, the NAMA versus the VSJ, you know, I saved a lot of time and got, I think, actually more yield than this machine, but I saved more time and less headaches by using the VSJ843. So once again, you know, every juicer has their pros and cons, and I have 20 juicers here. I could select whatever one I'm going to use for the task at hand and task at hand today. I'm choosing this machine. Last time I did this same process, I'll put a link down below. I think it was on my gardening channel where I was actually uh, juicing these guys, which are berries. Um, these guys are uh, highly nutritious uh, berries, and actually even experimental berries to some. And if you see my fingers like, John, why are your fingers all dark? It's because they're stained, because I spent probably that last half hour, 45 minutes, picking these guys individually. These are called Malbar spinach berries, or uh, base, Basella alba berries, Basella ruba, rubra uh, berries. Um, they have been, uh, number one, they're purple. So normally when you see a purple berry, you're thinking anthocyanins, man, that's a purple color, and they've done studies with the anthocyanins, and it's quite beneficial to take those anthocyanin compounds that are widely found in berries, uh, you know, like blueberries and blackberries, purple carrots, which I juice as many of them as I could get my hand on and eat those foods. Actually, I primarily eat my berries. I don't juice them normally. And then, uh, but actually, these guys actually contain, uh, they don't contain anthocyanins, they contain beta cyanins, which are actually a little bit different purple pigment, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm, I really want to extract all the nutrients out. Now, last time I juiced these guys, I was not aware if these guys were edible because I couldn't find a lot of research online at the time regarding it. So then I basically, uh, you know, uh, there's different components in the berries. You know, there's the skin. You want to do want to get the the nutrients out of the skin, the area under the skin, or the fruit flesh, the fruit pulp, or do you want to get nutrients out of the seed? You know, in the case of apples, too many apple seeds could kill you, so you don't want to just get all the nutrients out of the apple seeds alone, and you wouldn't want to do straight apple seeds, that'd be really not good. And so last time I was not aware if these Malbar spinach uh, seeds, the seeds are edible, so last time I opted to use a press, this press right here, I pressed out the juice, and not putting on maximum pressure so that I would not fractionate the seeds and not get the, the influx of the, the nutrients in the seeds into the juice because I did not, I, I didn't want to take the chance because I was not sure. Since that time, uh, you know, research have been brought to my attention that they actually are now juicing the berries uh, for their anti-cancer benefits uh, or potential in there. And I think it looks promising from the data and the research I've seen. Um, in addition, uh, I also have heard they do actually, they've done studies where they basically take the seeds only, they grind them up into an oil, which is basically concentrating seeds, concentrated the nutrients in the seeds and given oil and do, they did some uh, laboratory animal testing, which I'm not in agreement with laboratory animal testing, um, and there is no sign of a toxicity. So for that reason, I feel safe juicing these guys before juicing any kind of medicinal fruit or berry, um, you know, that you're not sure about, you know, please do your research. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. 
So I feel comfortable doing this, but if you do do this exact task that I'm doing, do it so at your own risk. I've been into this lifestyle now for 25 years where I drink juice and eat powders at trade shows and all different kinds of crazy things all the time. So I'm sure to some level my body's built up a tolerance to uh, some things. Um, and th this is what we're going to do today. So I want to extract all the nutrients as much as I can out of these berries without damaging the valuable phytochemicals. I want to get the nutrients out of the, the skin because there are a lot of nutrients in the skin, the fruit flesh, and also extract some of the nutrients out of the seed. And that's why I'm going to use the Nama today because it's going to basically grind up the skin, the seed, and everything and spit out the mash, which is going to be mostly skin fragments and uh, the seed fragments, and then give me just the juice out of it. So any seed oil will likely come out uh, in here, a small percentage. I mean, it's not super effective at doing that. Um, and then also all the pigments. And then we're going to get the pulp or the mash out. And then I'm going to show you guys how to get a second extract of the valuable phytonutrients. You know, it took me a half hour, 45 minutes to pick all these guys. I think I got like 10.2 ounces. I weighed them out. and But it took me like a whole growing season planting these guys, I think, you know, maybe uh, maybe June or something like that. And it's uh, November now, and it, it took a whole season to grow these berries, and I'm not going to have them until next year because they don't grow year-round in my climate. They would grow year-round in like a tropical climate like South Florida, for example. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get juicing. We're going to go ahead and turn this juicer on, and we're going to go ahead and take these berries, and we're going to dump them in on this little funnel, which is really convenient in this situation because we could just, uh, you know, portion a few of the berries in at a time. And you can hear the machine literally crunching up the seeds. And uh, slowly but surely, you will see, look at that, man, that is deep, rich, black juice. That makes me super happy. The deep, rich, black juice coming out. Now, you don't want to just load this machine up too much at once. You need it to give, you need it some, uh, you need to give it some time to work. And as you guys look, you can see over here, and I'll show you guys a close-up on this in a second. Um, the uh, pulp is coming out. And it's actually a little bit lighter in color because you can see, uh, you know, we got some of the crunched up seeds and maybe some of the skin, but this machine is very effective at grinding up. Uh, the other thing I don't like about this machine, if you did put all these seeds in here, you'll probably get some on your ceiling and it's going to get a lot of splatter and it's happening at a high RPM, which I'm not a huge, super huge fan of. So, you know, every juicer has their pros and cons. I mean, I've, some, I've made some videos with the Nama does not perform that well say when I juice my romaine lettuce but for this task I'm not going to choose any other juicer you know and I know some of you guys won't have 20 different juicers you know uh, available to you at any time to use based on the specific task at hand and I know some of you guys don't even have a Phillips screwdriver and you guys try to make do with a with a straight slot screwdriver when you got a Phillips head you know and you got to take out a a crossed uh, head you know and some of you guys have all the different tools in your workshop and you know that that router is really important when you got to route out things you could maybe kind of use a drill if you're a handy or not but you know the right tool for the right job is what my grandfather told me so you guys could see here look at this man we were getting one of the deepest darkest juices that I've seriously ever made in my life so we're gonna let the machine run just a little bit longer and I want to show it, pour this out for you guys in my hand. This will probably stain my hand a little bit. But this pulp is like, um, really, number one, it's a light color. And if I take this pulp and try to squeeze it, I can squeeze out a few drops. Uh, maybe what you can see them coming between, but they're not dripping. There's a couple drips. But yeah, the mash is quite, um, quite dry already, you know. But I'm going to show you guys how to get more. And I just wasted it because it's now all, on, all on my hand. And hey, we probably use your stuff for some makeup. <laughs> too and actually in, in, in other countries actually where the um, Malbar spinach is grown they use this for like makeup and actually even for food coloring I'm just gonna rub it in my hands because guess what our skin can also um, absorb phytonutrients you know rub it on my face so if I look funny <laughs> that's why all right so uh, this is the juice we made right here super deep rich dark purple juice so it's been some amount of time since I've tried this juice, so we're going to go ahead and try a little bit, but I'm not going to drink it like straight because it's probably super strong. And I want to um, dole this stuff out over the next, you know, maybe a week or so. And actually there is some particulate in there, so probably at a later time I will uh, use a sieve to strain it out. Wow. So last time I juiced it, from my memory, I juiced it in here and I just literally pressed out 
um, the fruit only without the seeds uh, getting in there. Um, but this one I juiced it with the seeds. It crushed up all the seeds and now there's juice. Last time it tasted really neutral, like didn't really taste like anything. This time I'm really tasting some hardcore bitter compounds. These may be some of the anti-cancer compounds <laughs> that are in this fruit. I'm not really sure. But generally most people are not going to want to drink this straight because just a tip of my tongue sampling it's quite bitter so I want to make it a lot sweeter and I want to actually extract more nutrients because we have basically some of those valuable beta cyanins and other nutrients still sitting in the juicer and also in this pulp so how will we do this today well we're gonna simply do it with some organic pineapple so what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna run the pineapple through the juicer to kind of clean out the passageways and get a pineapple juice that's now going to be purple color but this will allow us to basically flush out and get more nutrients out. So we're going to probably run some pineapple through it, get a nice uh, more um, lighter purple uh, juice with the pineapple, which will also add the sweetness so then I could stomach this stuff instead of being so bitter because the ground up seeds. And then we're going to go ahead and take this pulp and run it back through a little bit at a time as we run through uh, the uh, another fresh pineapple so we could have a fully dilute and make sure we run this pulp back through a couple times with fresh pineapple because a pineapple is so watery, the water is going to basically uh, go along and extract some of those more valuable phytonutrient chemicals out of the fruit. Now, for some of you guys, you might think I'm freaking totally crazy and weird, and that's all right because my, uh, my brother and his wife probably think that. <clears throat> but some of you guys are going to think I'm really cool. <laughs> and you guys can think whatever you want to think of me. I'm just doing what I do. <laughs> And yes, it is a little bit different and weird compared to most people, but I am definitely <laughs> not most people. So I'm going to go ahead and um, cut off all the skin of the pineapple. All right, now that I got the skin cut off the pineapple, I want to show you guys how to properly cut a pineapple juice in a vertical juicer. If you don't do my procedure for juicing pineapple in a vertical juicer, it's going to jam up, it's going to clog, and it's not going to work well. So mainly you got that core in the middle of the pineapple. You got to see that's where it's like uh, literally like the, uh, you know, the little circle in the middle. That's the core. So we're going to cut tic-tac-toe pattern. So tic-tac-toe pattern is just, you know, two down the side. And then one here. And then basically the middle square would be the core. This is the part that will jam up the machine. Also very important when juicing pineapple. Get the nice firmest pineapple you can. That's why I selected some to juice that are green, more green. Then yellow and getting soft, they would juice more poorly. Um, so now next we're just going to go ahead and cut some of these pieces into spears, which is the non-core pieces. And the two little side things we're just going to go ahead and cut. And now the core pieces is very important. I like to basically slice it lengthwise, maybe like twice. And then we're going to take the knife and we're just going to cut it into little pieces. This is the part that can jam up the machine because there are long fibers in the core that run, uh, you know, vertically. And we got to cut these fibers up and they're jam the machine. This could also happen with things like celery and leafy greens and ginger. And that's why you should pre-cut those items if you use a vertical juicer as well. I recommend cutting to eighth inch, minimum quarter inch uh, width. All right. All right. So now that we have the pineapple all cut, we're just going to go ahead and drop in a pineapple into the feed chute and uh, let it basically get sucked in the machine at the machine's pace. I do not like to use the pusher unless I need to. And as you guys can see, we're now extracting more of that purple pigment. The pigments in foods, based on my research, are one of the most important factors in the foods, um, especially the purple ones. So try to juice. If you can't get Malbar spinach berries, you don't grow them. You know, try to juice things like purple carrots that have some of these purple anthocyanins and purple carrots tend to be fairly inexpensive also things like red cabbage very beneficial also things like the deep rich you know beets so we're gonna go ahead and put a couple of these pineapples in until the water starts coming out of it clear and then every once in a while you're gonna put in a couple core pieces even though this pineapple is firm it's still a bit soft texture for this machine that the machine may have issues with but once you put a couple core pieces and rotate those in that adds additional fiber to help push um, you know, the pulp through the machine. All right, so once we got um, a lot of that out, we're gonna go ahead and switch off our catch cup here. And now we're gonna go ahead and then put a little bit, like a small handful of the uh, pulp, the purple pulp in the machine. 
and then we're going to go ahead and take a piece of the pineapple. What this will do is, this will then rejuice the pulp with some pineapple behind it, so the, basically the pineapple juice will kind of uh, give the purple, um, you know, or the nutrients in the seeds some extra water to help them get pushed through the machine so you can do a further extraction. So this is a technique that I also use when I'm juicing things like uh, turmeric and ginger um, that tend to be fairly expensive and especially when I juice ginseng, I'll do this technique at least three times to make sure I get all those valuable phytonutrients out of my ginseng. Which actually for me, I think that, that stuff runs like $40, $50 a pound, which is quite expensive. All right. Every time you uh, put it through the machine, the pulp will come out a little bit more like, uh, or the pulp will come out a little bit more lighter, right? And that's pulling some of those viable phytochemicals out of the pulp even. Now you don't want to put just straight pulp back through the machine that can block up the machine, jam the machine, and even cause potential breakage. You always want to do it with something watery. You know, so in the case when I'm reducing my ginger turmeric pulp, I also actually use pineapple. Pineapple I like because it has some acids in there, which also may help pull additional nutrients out and also acts as a mild preservative to help preserve your juice. Because once you make the juice, you know, there's lots of studies on how do you preserve, they actually have studies on how do you preserve some of the phytonutrients out of the Malbar spinach berries, right? And they've actually shown by fermentation after you make the juice, that, that potentially can preserve some of those phytonutrients. Um, all my juices will be stored under vacuum to help me preserve the nutrients at a cold temperature for the next few days. I will, these will not be stored any long term. I do always encourage you guys to drink your juices. So here's an issue with the Nama that I'm not a big fan of. As you guys can see, <clears throat> pineapple's just stuck in the top. It's not dropping in. If I was to use the VSJ, it would drop in and that makes me, forces me to use a pusher to push things and help it along. I mean, with a simple push, it'll go in, but to me, it should not get being stuck up in this area because I'd rather not have to literally babysit my juicer and make sure things are going in, um, you know. And then at the end, you want to save some of the core pieces and uh, run those through. And once again, I put those in and they're still getting stuck in the machine. They're not just easily dropping in that's due to the design of the machine in my personal opinion. All right, we got it. We got them unstuck by just pushing it a little bit and getting it in a jar. So as you guys can see, the juice coming out now is a lot more actually, I would say, uh, pinkish in color. And you can see now we pretty much have a lot of straight uh, pineapple pulp come out. I think with the last pineapple here, I'm gonna run this uh, pulp back through again, uh, but I'm gonna use this pineapple, but we will do that off camera for you guys to save you guys some time last part of this video so I want to show you guys a different color so basically the yellow of the pineapple plus the pulp alone still made a fairly dark juice is actually a nice I really like this purple color but look at that purple color man that's like almost black so amazing so now hopefully I can try this juice <laughs> and it's gonna be sweeter because oh I forgot to mention that after I tried that this juice right here um, in my the back of my throat started getting like kind of itchy and so that may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> so that's why, once again, I'm going to um, probably juice a couple more pineapples even off camera after this to dilute this a lot more um, down because I still have lots of this material. And this is just the rejuiced pulp alone. Um, and I'm going to add this stuff into it. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and try this. Oh, wow. That's much more agreeable. So this reminds me of kind of like the straight juice that I made last last time I juiced these Malbar berries, um, you know, without the seeds, without the seed impact, um, you know, without the bitter compounds. Mm, I could tolerate that. It tastes a little bit sweet from the pineapple. I taste some of the acid from the pineapple, but it has a really unique flavor that I'm unable to describe in words. I could describe it as, it tastes like Malbar spinach juice. <laughs> Malbar spinach berry juice, sorry. The Malbar spinach is normally grown for its leafy greens, which are also edible and quite healing. They have a mucilaginous or some beneficial fibers based on my research. In any case, that's pretty much it for this episode. I want to show you guys actually how I juice my medicinal berries. Now, 
I'm using fresh berries, very important with a higher water content. If you have berries that have a low water content or are dried, do not use this technique. It will likely break the juicer. Somebody is trying to like process cinnamon through their auger juicer to grind it up and it broke their juicer. Uh, the way I would process dried or low water content berries is I would basically uh, soak them in, the, in a liquid. Maybe I would use like coconut water myself. You could use water. Soak them for a while, especially the dried ones. Let them sit overnight. I would do it under vacuum, which would force liquid in there. And then I would basically blend under vacuum to ensure you don't lose that many valuable um, you know, antioxidants that may be exposed to air in a standard blending process. And then once you've got that mixture, then you could pour it through this machine or then you could use this machine with one of the different press cloths to extract out the nutrients out of that. So that's pretty much the end of this episode. I really want to show you guys this technique because this is something I do all the time, but I don't have a video about this yet and I strive to make videos on juicing all different kinds of fruits and vegetables from passion fruits to jackfruit I juiced once, even I juiced avocado. A lot of things can be juiced and you never know unless you watch my video uh, to find out how exactly it worked. If you guys enjoyed my content, want to encourage me to do more videos there's only one way you could do that is to make your juicer purchase at discountjuicers.com this allows me to continue to you know uh, buy my pineapples and power my lights and make these videos so that i could share my knowledge and share you know intricate detail of how the juicers work and why one juicer may be better than another in each specific situation and uh, I thank you guys that have supported me in the past and thank you guys in advance who will support me in the future. I'm like the small farmer trying to make a living against all these big agri companies like the big box stores on those big huge, super huge giant uh, you know, websites that sell juicers that your money goes to who knows where. With me, you're, you're, you're supporting the small guy so I appreciate that uh, greatly. If you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this video to other people you may think it can benefit. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new upcoming episodes. I've come out about every five to seven days. You never know what I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are wealth of knowledge. There are 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting all the different major brand juicers as well as some of the different vacuum blenders and other appliances such as dehydrators that allow you to get more of these plant foods in you that are the richest source of these phytonutrients and phytochemicals on earth. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.